ladies and gentlemen, preseason is back. And the first game of week one of the preseason was the Texans versus Patriots. And as you can see from the title of this video, CJ Stroud did get the start. He played about two drives and he did not look great at all. He went two for four for 13 yards and one interception. So he didn't look great. He had a couple of overthrows, which you don't like to see, especially especially since coming out of college, he was known for his accuracy. That was kind of like his calling card. And he didn't look very accurate today. Um, he was under pressure a lot. His offensive line did not do him much um, good at all. But he did have that one really bad interception to Jalen Mills, which, by the way, Jalen Mills looked great. He had that interception, and he also had a really good uh, tackle for loss on a blitz. But that's besides the point. C.J. Stroud also took a pretty bad sack. It was like a 15-yard loss. And he also stumbled out of his bootleg one time. To, um, I think it was one of his last plays. He stumbled out of the bootleg. Got the ball out late to the receiver and it almost ended in another pick. But he just got it to his receiver. So all in all, CJ Stroud did not look great. But it is preseason. It's his first ever start. So I wouldn't read too much into it. I'm not saying CJ Stroud is going to be a bust or anything like that. I still think he's going to be the week one starter. And he's still got two preseason games to go to improve. So I wouldn't read too much into it. But it is something to note. And another thing to note is... Davis Mills and Case Keenum probably played better than C.J. Stroud today, which, like I said, don't read too much into it. It's his first start. But moving on to the Texans rookie receiver, Tank Dell, he had a big uh, first half. I don't think he played much in the second half, but his first half was crazy. He had five receptions for 65 yards and a touchdown. And a couple of those plays were on slant routes that he was able to catch and break free. And he was able to put his elusiveness on notice which is nice and then he also had that circus catch in the end zone which if you haven't seen that play I'd recommend watching it. It was like a fade route that he probably should have hauled in cleanly but he kind of bobbled it and falling to the ground he was able to secure the catch with his foot almost being out of bounds but not quite. So it was a bit of a lucky catch and you would like to see him catch it cleanly but regardless he had a really good showing and he also looked pretty big out there like one of his biggest knocks coming out was his size. He was very skinny, but he, he looked like he put on some muscle or something. He looked pretty big. Moving on to another rookie that had a pretty good game was Keon White from the Patriots. Now, Keon White does not look like a rookie. He is big, and he looks like he's about 40 years old. But regardless, he had a really good game. He just had constant pressure, especially on CJ Stroud in the beginning of the game. And he also had a few um, big run stuffs. He stopped CJ Stroud on a scramble on a third down, I believe. He stopped him with like one yard to go. So Keon White definitely had a good game. Moving on, Bailey Zappi looked good coming into a second season. Um, he had a couple of good throws, including a deep ball to Tyquan Thornton for like a 20-yard gain or so. It was just a really good throw and a really good catch. But overall, he had a pretty good game. He went 12 for 14 for 79 yards and no touchdowns, no interceptions. But he just played a pretty clean game. Pretty safe game as well. He didn't really, besides that 20-yard throw to Tyquan Thor Thornton, he really didn't do um, anything risky. It was a lot of screen plays, a lot of short passes, which is what you expect in the preseason. Malik Cunningham played the fourth quarter, and he looked special. For being an undrafted rookie from Louisville, he definitely made a claim to be on this roster, and if not, maybe the practice squad. But he went 3-for-4 four for 19 yards, and his one incompletion was a drop. He threw a beautiful pass into the end zone, but but Trey Nixon dropped it. So he probably should have went 4-for-4 four four with a touchdown, but he ended up going 3-for-4 with no touchdowns. And then on the ground, he also had 5 carries for 34 yards and a touchdown. So he definitely showed his dual threat ability. And I believe they also had him line up at receiver a bit too. So he's kind of just going to be this gadget weapon, I think, that might get a fringe roster spot, but if not, he'll be on the practice squad. But I do think he looked pretty nice out there. Moving on, Christian Gonzalez didn't really do much. He didn't play bad. He didn't play good. He was just kind of out there, which, you know, isn't a bad thing. Um, what else do I have in my notes? Um, Amir Speed, this I believe sixth round rookie. He looked pretty good on special teams. He'll probably solidify a roster spot as a special teams player. And that's about it for the uh, Texans-Patriots game. It was a Struggle for C.J. Stroud, Keon White had a pretty good game, Tank Dill had a good game, Xavier Hutchison also for the Texans had a pretty good uh, game as well. But yeah, that's about it for that game. And now moving on to the Vikings game, it wasn't as interesting as the first game, 
but we did get to see two first round receivers battle it out in JSN and Jordan Addison. Now JSN got involved early, but he didn't really do much. He had three catches for 25 yards and his longest catch was for 15 yards. So it was a good show and nothing spectacular. And as Jordan Addison, he only had one catch for 22 yards, but it was a nice little crosser that was underthrown by Nick Mullins. And if Nick Mullins got it on the money, it could have probably went for a lot more. But as it stood, it was a one catch for 22 yards. Boye Mafe had a pretty good game. He had a nice tackle for loss on Dwayne McBride. And speaking of Dwayne McBride, he didn't look great, the running back from UAB. He looked a little stiff on his kick returns and... As a runner, he had 6 carries for 15 yards, which would be at 2.5 yards per carry. So, not great. Um, he didn't look great at all. He just looked stiff. He didn't look like he was he had any wiggle to him. But a Vikings running back that did look good was Ty Chandler. He had 11 carries for 41 yards, and he also had a few catches. 4 catches for 29 yards to be exact. So, he was kind of like their feature back today, and he looks like he's going to probably be the uh, solid backup to... Alexander Madison who didn't play but I think it's still going to be a battle between Ty Chandler and Dwayne McBride on who's going to be that backup but Ty Chandler definitely has the edge as of now but like like I said in the other game we still got two preseason games and anything can happen. Derek Hall from the Seahawks didn't really do much he had a rough in the passer call but besides that he wasn't really um, involved in the game. The undrafted rookie Andre Carter from Army. He was all over the place it seemed like for the Vikings. He was just making plays. He was just out hustling guys. So you like to see that. He's making a case to be um, at least on the practice squad. If not making the 53 man roster. Uh, the rookie Zach Charbonnet looked aggressive. He lowered his shoulder on every run. He only got 4 carries. And I believe he also got 2 catches out of the backfield. But it seemed like on all six times he got the ball in his hands, he lowered the shoulder and put some pain in the defender's eyes. So you like to see that. He definitely looks like he's going to be that feature back alongside Kenneth Walker who didn't play. But you'd like to think that they're going to probably split carries. Charbonnet will probably be that guy that gets the ball in between the 20s. Moving on, what else do I have in my notes? Uh, Drew Locke had a nice tight window touchdown throw. He looked good. He did have an interception that was pretty bad. He kind of just threw the ball under pressure just in the air hoping for something and it got intercepted. But he also had two pretty nice touchdown throws. Jaron Hall looked pretty average I guess. He went 6 for 14. So altogether not as interesting of a game as the first game but you had to see a few rookies do a little something. And it was good to see um, Jordan Addison and JSN finally get some reps in the NFL along with Zach Charbonnet. But yeah, that's going to do it. If you like the video, um, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing this for every day that there's football. So tomorrow I'll be here Saturday and Sunday. And when the regular season starts, I'll be having videos out on Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. Just recapping everything that happened in the NFL that day. So if you like the channel, consider subscribing. And as always, this is the Draft Nerd and thanks for watching.